I'm unsure if you guys can hear me, but we are going to um, have Sam log back in on her other computer and see if that makes a difference in terms of the stream. So please stand by and we'll, uh, we'll keep this going. It looks like the, the live stream is still up, but I think I may stop that for the moment because it is just my name is not particularly interesting. Okay, great. Okay, I, it, good to know that some of you can hear me. Um, I'm going to actually type into chat, please know if you cannot hear me. I am talking right now. Yeah, so, so June, you checked on Facebook and on Zoom, but you couldn't hear on Facebook, is that correct? Um, it would be, that would be useful to know. What an odd little issue. Okay, Robin can hear on Zoom, good to know. Only here on Zoom, okay. So yeah, Facebook was not coming through for whatever reason. So let me actually make a comment over there. We are going to restart the stream in a moment. Please stand by, exclamation points, so you know it's me. Okay, thanks for hanging in, guys. Um, I suspect we're going to go a little bit long, or we may just, just kill it for the day. I'm not sure what the plan is. So in the meantime, <laughs> I, I'm happy to, as we're sort of doing the waiting dance, does anybody have any tech questions they need answered? Um, any any odd, uh, random, just why is this working the way it, it works or, you know, happy to kind of fill the time for you if you'd like. In the meantime, I wonder if there's some sort of like, oh, there she is. Okay, now it actually says she's muted. Hello. Hooray. Hey, am I here? Oh, awesome. All right, let's uh, put us live on Facebook, see if we can get that to work. Hey, everybody, thanks for being patient. Um, today's an Ask Me Anything call, so if you've got any questions or thoughts or things you want me to talk about, uh, this is your big chance to type them into the chat or uh, into the Facebook page. Logging into Facebook. Isn't this fun to get to see like the backstage tech of it all? Yeah. So what I was saying before was, um, as you know, we got uh, new cats and um, one of the ways they like to get our attention is by knocking over um, water. <laughs> Um, and they knocked over water onto my beautiful computer uh, so then I had to take it luckily I had Apple Care, so it wasn't so expensive to fix it but it did mean they needed to wipe the hard drive so basically my my real computer the big one is like now all brand new and I'm having to reset everything up and um uh, it's kind of cool because in some ways it's sort of a chance to you know have a computer that doesn't have a million years of crap on it. Um, but on the other hand, it's uh, it means that sometimes things like the Zoom and the streaming doesn't work. So okay, here we go. This looks really. Uh, blurry to me. Let's see if I can make this slightly less blurry. Not slightly less blurry. Boy, you can really tell the difference between those two cameras, can't you? Wow. Um, look kind of cute on the other one. This one, a little haggard. Um, hi, everybody. Great to see you. Yeah, gotta love living with kitties. 
kind of a shocking way to declutter. I know, right? Um, but that's what happens sometimes. If you don't do it, <laughs> God will do it for you. <laughs> I had a friend who was really stuck um, in her house. It was just filled with, she, her husband had died and she just sort of kept this house as almost a mausoleum. And, and um, that sounds morbid. It wasn't quite like that, but she had a lot of stuff that she wasn't getting rid of because it was tied to memories of her husband. And, um, and then one day the entire house burned down. <laughs> it's like, okay, way to start fresh. Uh, good, let's, uh, let's do some breathing. Let's do some breathing, shall we? So thank you all for hanging in there with me. Thank you for being here, Veronica. Thank you for managing the, uh, the helm uh, as always. And um, yeah, let's center into this present moment. What invitations are you getting and ignoring? What, uh, where are you waiting for an act of God? to get clear on something. Let your belly go really soft. Soften your gaze. Soften your self-judgment. Soften your judgment of others. And let's inhale, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Exhale, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Inhale, two, three, four. Hold, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Exhale, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Inhale, two, three, four. Hold, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Exhale. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ah, thank you. Thank you for doing that with me. Great to see you here. Hey, Allison. Hi, Lucy, Margaret. Great, great to see you. Heather, how's it going? Uh, June, meet Leah. Great to see you. Um, so this is an Ask Me Anything call. So if you have a question or just something you're wondering about or something you feel a little stuck around or just, I don't know, something's on your mind, uh, please feel free to type it into the chat or type it into the uh, Facebook messages and Veronica will relay it here over to me. Um, oh, I was saying, so I'm using my See You in Belize mug because we are of course taking 20 women to Belize in May. And as it happens, we've had, because we had to change the dates and people's plans had to change, we have two spots available in Belize. Um, so if you are interested, go to barefootperfect.com, barefootperfect.com, uh, and you can see all the details and you can just fill out an application. And I encourage you to do this, even if it interests you even just a little bit, because, um, there's a way, there's a place in the application where you could just say like, no, no, just dreaming. I don't really want to come or I can't really come. Um, but the application is sort of interesting and it can be fun to make a gesture like this. If this is something you would just want to do in the future to be able to say, to just take a little step um, of filling out the application. And like I said, it's fine if you're just filling it out for fun. Um, it can kind of start to set things in motion. And maybe you're filling it out because you really would like to come and we would like to have you come. So barefootperfect.com uh, with me and Amy Ehlers. It's a um, oh, hi, Kitty. Uh, visioning retreat in Belize at the most extraordinary resort. It's so beautiful and so simple, right? It's one of those places where like everything's taken care of, but nothing's super fancy. It's not fancy or frilly or fussy or stuffy or anything. It's just really natural and clean and lovely. And oh gosh, it's such a good time. So if you are interested in Belize, please go to barefootperfect.com and fill out that application. Um, yeah, so what are you wondering about? What are your questions? Where do you, what are you thinking of? Heather's saying she can hear a, a bird in the background. Yes, you probably can. My, um, I used to live across from a salt marsh. Um, so there was oh, an estuary, so there was always bird sounds. <laughs> um, and now I live across from an agricultural field and there's uh, often bird sounds. So uh, let's see, Allison says, hi, hi, Allison. Allison says, I have a question about scaling. Good problem, but people are booking my high-end package, $8,000 fast and without warning. 
<laughs> I'm not really nurturing them personally. They're referred or part of my free Facebook group for writers. Fantastic. Bigger opportunity, scaling. I need to turn my successful methods into programs. So I built this program charging 2K, but nobody's biting. They just upgrade to the 8K one-on-one -on -one version, which is great, but sort of not the point. Also time is finite. Options, lower the price of the current program, 797 maybe change the program into a self-study without a start-stop date with a private Facebook group you get access for six to 12 months, something else, totally open to cheers and jeers. Um, well, first of all, Allison, what a fantastic problem to have, and I'm not in the least, book least bit surprised, y'all, if you are trying to get a book proposal together um, or get a book marketed, um, talk to Allison Lane, she's a genius. Um, and certainly join her free Facebook group. Um, uh, Allison, if you want to put the name of it, uh, into this chat, that's okay with me. Um, so yeah, if nobody's complaining about your pricing, then your pricing's too low, right? So I would raise the rates for your one-on-one. -on -one. Um, I would, um, yeah, 2 is a lot for a self-study um, program. Um, and obviously these are people who feel like they, they want a little more handholding. So I wonder if you might uh, make it sort of a hybrid program where like, so one week they get the lesson and the second week they get a live Q and A with you. And the next week they get a lesson and the next week they get a live Q and A with you. Um, so you don't have to teach the same thing over and over again, but you can help manage their questions as they move along. You can also take on uh, another coach, um, somebody else to help you, um, you know, and give them one-on-ones with that person, somebody that obviously that you trust and think is amazing. Um, you can, um, yeah, and I would experiment with the pricing at the, at the, you know, on the on the lower end thing. Uh, you're not going to know until until you hit it. I think seven ninety seven is a good price. I like that number. Um, it's a little unusual, but I like it, and um, it. Uh, you know, although if you're going to charge 797, you might as well charge 997 because for the consumer, there isn't really a difference. They don't, people don't perceive the difference between 797 and 997. So you might as well make another 200 bucks. Um, so that's what I might do. I might add in, um, you know, or maybe give them one bonus one on one with you or again with an affiliate coach or somebody else in your, in your operation. Um, The other thing people really love, um, I don't know what bonuses you've added into the, the, the Evergreen program, but the more you can underline the deliverables, like you will get my exclusive checklist, you will get the, uh, the 2K was a hands-on six-week program. I'm thinking of downgrading to a self-study with limited access to me. Yeah, that, yeah that's, that's what I'm saying. Yep, exactly. Um, oh, so the 2K was live, right? Yeah, no, I, I would skip that. I would either have it be one-on-one -on -one with you or on demand. And then maybe there's a monthly call with you or every other week is a, is a group call with you or something like that, or something, or maybe a, a Facebook Live. Um, and, uh, but yeah, but that's a great, I mean, again, I'm delighted for you. What a great problem to have. and definitely raise the price of your one-on-ones and, and yeah, and keep experimenting, but that's congratulations, girl. Way to rock it. Way to do the thing. Um, yes. If no one's complaining about your prices, you're not charging enough. If no one's complaining about your marketing, you're not marketing enough. Um, okay. Jim says, tech question. What is the best way to do regular backups with easy access for multiple home computers? Both OneDrive and Google Drive are so annoying. Yes, so true. Um, there's multiple uh, cloud backup systems. Um, uh, I think I use one called ARC, A-R-Q, but I don't know how good it is or isn't, honestly. Um, I think I just got a special offer on it, and so that's what I use. Um, if you have Apple, there's Time Machine. Um, but Veronica would probably be better to chime in here. Veronica, do you have thoughts on this? Uh, uh, I do have some thoughts on this. Uh, first, I, you know, I, I want to remind people that there is no best. Okay. Um, your call is important to us. Oop. Are you guys not hearing me? Here's Katie. Hello. Can, can uh, you hear me now? 
Nope. You Good. Cannot. Ron, could you have thoughts on how to back up multiple home computers? She says, I do, but my audio is not working. <laughs> Huh. Okay, you guys can hear Veronica. Oh, I can't because I have my speakers off. That's why. Um, okay, so I will talk and I'll chat you when I stop talking. When I stop. Oh, there, she there she is. Oh, you can hear me now. I can hear you now. Excellent. This is so bizarre. So um, bizarre. So, yeah, okay. So as I was saying, I want to remind people that there is no best in terms of this sort of thing. It, there are often um, a lot of services that are really comparable. And if you get confused choosing between the options, it's because they're all basically the same. Um, what, you're, what you're looking for, if you're talking about doing backups across multiple computers, you're gonna to wanna to choose something that's cloud-based. It's uh, because uh, Time Machine is really only gonna provide you with a local backup. Um, so this computer is backed up on Time Machine with this hard drive, and the other computer is backed up on this Time Machine with the other hard drive. So choosing something else like Arc or like Backblaze, I've heard a lot of really good things about. Um, I am notoriously bad about managing my own backups, so I don't have a personal recommendation for you, but any anything that is in the realm of like roughly the size that you need for a price you can afford will do you just fine. Awesome. Thanks, Veronica. And it's worth staying on top of, um, uh, you know, uh, skimming, you know, Mac World or, or whatever, um, you know, PC World, whatever the magazines are of the computers that you use, because uh, there's always something new coming out. I have also heard good things about Backblaze. Um, I would, I would probably pick that if I were doing it again. And I'll let you know how good that arc is at, at restoration, because, like I said, that's what I've got on this computer, and I haven't tried to restore anything yet. Um, I'm thinking I might not. Like I said, I'm thinking I might just keep it clean and just add things in as I need them. Uh, Backblaze, B-A-C-K-B-L-A-Z-E, Backblaze. Um, ARC is A-R-Q, A-R-Q. Um, but definitely back up. <laughs> definitely back up. Definitely back up. Whatever you're doing, however you do it. Um, I also um, synced to Dropbox. So I have things going into Dropbox all the time. <clears throat> and, um, and I keep a lot of stuff on the cloud. There's a lot of stuff in the Google Drive. There's a lot of stuff um, on Basecamp. There's a lot of stuff in Dropbox um, so that the team can access things. So um, yeah, that's, that's my advice. Uh, good. Let's see what else in the other questions. Okay, good. I haven't missed anything. Uh, Gail says, I know this tech stuff is frustrating, but it's kind of fun and interesting, and I'm enjoying it because we're all here together sharing this experience. I still find that amazing. I know, right? Incredible. Um, Where says a committee I'm on has been using Google Docs to share our stuff. Yep. Judy says she, use back, she uses Backblaze and she likes it a lot. So there you go. Um, so again, I'm wide open to questions from you. Uh, the one thing I was thinking about a lot this morning was what's negotiable for you and what's not negotiable for you. Um, because what I notice is if you want something to transform, you've got to make it non-negotiable. You know, I go for a walk every day. It's non-negotiable. You know, I do my prayer work every day. It's non-negotiable. I don't work for free. It's non-negotiable. I was just, um, thinking about a, a friend of mine, I remember us have, the two of us having a conversation at a party 25 years ago, 30 years ago even, um, about working for free and feeling really torn about it and feeling like, well, you know, we like doing these fun projects and stuff, but we really want to make a living as artists. And, you know, it eats into this huge amount of time and everybody always says like, oh, it's going to be great exposure. You're going to make great connections. And then it never is. Um, and so we both sort of made a pinky swear at that party that we were no longer going to work for free. And now she's a famous TV star and um, I'm here with you guys. So <laughs> um, you know, I made a promise to myself years ago uh, that I was really only going to work with ideal clients, right? With people that I really felt like I get them, I can help them. They get me, they can pay me. They laugh at my jokes, they share my value system, right? Those of you who've been in trainings with me know ideal client is someone who needs you, 
they know they need you and that they are demonstrating through their behavior that they know they need you, like they're Googling you, they're reaching out to you. Um, they need you, they know they need you. Uh, they can pay you, they share your value system or at least some of your value system. And I was reminded of how powerful this is. Uh, uh, just this last week, I had a consultation with one person who was clearly not an ideal client. And then just yesterday, I had a conversation with somebody who was, first of all, we get on Zoom, we're wearing basically the exact same outfit with the exact same glasses. We're like, hi there. <laughs> we hide it off immediately. Everything she said, I'm like, I totally, I'm with you. Like, I think we're gonna have a really long and fruitful relationship. Um, but if I had tied myself up in knots, trying to make myself fit for this, for the, the client who wasn't such a good fit, I don't even know if I would have been available for her, right? Um, Julie says, yeah, the cool thing about making things non-negotiable is that you never have to deliberate with yourself or anyone else saves time and 3 a.m. second guessing. Exactly, exactly. So where, you want, where do you wanna see something transform and where are you willing to make it non-negotiable? Um, you know, my friends who've had to take sort of drastic measures to transform their health, um, you know, their diet, stuff is non-negotiable. They cannot have gluten. They cannot have sugar. They cannot have caffeine. They cannot have whatever it is. Um, and I have also heard it said that the negotiator is part of the addict's brain, right? The minute you start going like, well, I don't eat sugar. Well, except on special occasions, or if I'm really sad, or if there's some ice cream, or if it's my favorite, or if, you know, like, and all of a sudden, you know, there you are at three in the morning eating ice cream. Um, not that there's anything wrong with that, um, but it's this flip-flopping, right? It's this going back and forth. And I know you all, because you all are so super smart, you can talk yourself in and out of things on a dime. So, so this is my question for you. This is my opportunity for you is, what would you like to see become non-negotiable in your life? Where are you just gonna say, you know what? End of the road, this is it. And it can be something very simple. It can be something personal. I remember um, probably 10, yeah, 10 years ago, I had changed a bunch of things um, in my life and I realized that I was, one of the things I made mean, non-negotiable was I was no longer going to have any conversations with myself about what I looked like or what my diet was. I was just done. It was like, I have been counting calories since I was 11 years old. I have been in a fit of self-loathing my entire life. <laughs> my poor body <laughs> has worked so hard for me and all I've done is criticize it. And I was like, I'm just done. I'm just closing the door in that conversation. I'm not gonna think about what I'm eating. I'm gonna eat what I eat and do what I do. My body's gonna look like what it looks like. End of, end of conversation. And I'm gonna approve of it. End of conversation. And it took some discipline, like, you know, but I realized too, like, if I was, if I was worrying about how much I weighed or what I looked like, like, it was really like just sort of mental worry beads. It was because I was just, um, bored, you know, like, I, I don't know, so every, anytime the thought came up about what I looked like, I was like, Samantha, surely you have something more interesting to think about. And, um, and I was like, forget it. Just, you know, you, you, you eat what you eat, you do what you do, you, you know, and if it's brie and baguettes every day for a month, then that's what it is. Like, stop fussing. And um, I have to say, I, it really, uh, it helped. It was an important step on my journey. And like having that, you know, whatever your habitual self-criticisms are, like, can you just step out of the conversation entirely? Can you just say, nope, I'm not having that. I'm not having that anymore. I'm not talking to myself that way anymore, ever, under any circumstances. Um, hi, Leslie. Leslie says, no question yet, but want to chime in about this call and this version of Girl Power and how pleased I am to witness you guys doing your things because you can, such an excellent vibe in this room. I know, you know, I know so many people who've got Facebook groups and they're always like, oh, you know, it's hard to keep out the trolls or there's a lot of negative energy or there's people like doing a lot of self-promotion. I'm like, really? We never have that problem. We just have this like incredibly supportive, lovely group of interesting people who like to share and support each other. <laughs> because we made it non-negotiable. 
<laughs> right? We have a no assholes rule and so far it works great. Uh, Julie says, that's a great criterion. Whatever you want to see transform, that's what you make non-negotiable. Exactly, exactly. Uh, Amy says, imagine the creative productive energy if even a small percentage of women made that same choice to not entertain the self-negating body shaming, right? I mean, we've been trained. We've been trained to hate ourselves. We've been trained to think we're less than. We've been trained to obsess. Um, we've been trained to believe that there is only one ideal way to look and then you, and however far away you veer from that is how ugly you are. Um, when of course, that's just not true. You know, my emails say, by the way, you look really great today because you look really great today. You look really great today. You know why? Because you're here to look great. And, you know, do you look the way you looked 20 years ago? I certainly hope not. And it takes an enormous strength of will to shut out all those voices. Um, and it takes work to find clothes that don't look like you're apologizing for yourself. Uh, you know, I'm almost 5'11". I wear a size 16, 18, something like that. Uh, my friend Phil was gobsmacked when I told him like, yeah, most stores don't carry my size. Like if we go to the mall, uh, you know, there's, there's really nothing for me to buy. And he was like, wait, what? I'm like, I know, because he's a guy and he's a fairly standard size person. Um, so everything fits him. He can shop anywhere. And it had never crossed his mind that like, he's like, but like, how do you buy clothes? I'm like, with a lot of challenges, <laughs> it's hard. <clears throat> and there's a lot more options now than there was 10 years ago, um, which is great. A lot of, you know, a lot of online purveyors and people making ethically sourced clothing and all kinds of great things happening. But so many as you're buying them online, I still have to try them on. Half the time I ship things back. Uh, Allison says, oh my God, finding clothes that don't look like you're apologizing for your body. That's a mic drop. Yeah. Yeah, I can't, I was shopping with uh, my friend Shiloh. Some of you know Shiloh Sophia. We were having a girls afternoon together a, a million years ago now in, in Burbank. And um, yeah, and I first said it to her. I was like, yeah, I just want to find something that doesn't look like I'm apologizing for myself. Um, I also make it tough because like, I don't think, I don't like things that are form fitting. I don't like things that are shiny or silky or frilly. I don't like, I like things that are feminine, but not too girly. Like, you know, I don't like anything that looks like a costume. Um, you know, <laughs> like I have a number of additional criteria that make shopping, that would make shopping challenging no matter who I was. Um, you know, my sister has a great line too. Uh, and she's, you know, got a much more standard size body than I do. Um, so she can pretty much shop anywhere. But her whole thing is she puts it on, she goes, does this make me feel special? We were shopping together, she puts something on, I was like, that looks cute. She's like, yeah, it's okay. She goes, but it doesn't make me feel special. And I was like, great, back on the rack. So this is another great question. That's a non-negotiable for her. She's not gonna buy something that doesn't make her feel special. Why would she put her hard earned money into something that she just feels so-so about, right? She's gonna buy something. She wants to look at it in her closet and go, ooh, that's cute. Oh, I feel good. Oh, I love this, right? Um, June says, how do you have your camera set up so you can look right in her eyes? Charming, by the way, on Zoom with a group, our eyes are shifting all over the place. Um, I look into the camera, which is right up here. You can uh, use Veronica's trick of, um, uh, here, let me just demonstrate this for you. Um, Uh, putting two little eyeballs on a post-it and then uh, taping it to the back of your computer so that you remember to look up there. Um, and I remember that you are there. <laughs> and I try to connect with you emotionally through the camera. Like I send, I deliberately send my energy up and out through the camera. Um, you can hide your own self view um, on Zoom. So you don't have to look at yourself because it's very hard not to look at yourself. Um, uh, so those are my two pieces of advice for, yeah, but just look into the camera. That's all. 
Yeah, uh, Amy says in men's dress clothes are bought with the expectation of altering them to fit. Right, exactly. Suits are, it's, it's assumed that the suit is gonna get tailored, right? Crazy. Um, and Amy says part of why I knit and sew, right? So you can make your own stuff for sure. Uh, Leah says, especially with after pandemic bodies, so hard to find good clothes. Yeah, I know. And, and um, yeah, I, and, 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 and the amount of people I see not moving forward on their lives or their work or their career because they don't like the way they look. So they're not making videos. They're not getting new headshots. They're not posting photos of their work. They're not taking speaking. They're not looking for speaking gigs. They're not um, offering live presentations. They're not, um, you know, doing. I mean, you guys, these LinkedIn learning videos. I am a few thousand people away from half a million learners. Five hundred thousand people have seen these videos. If I'd been waiting till I thought I looked good. The first couple, especially like I got major pandemic hair, like, I, you know, <clears throat> I don't look right, but guess what? Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Nobody has, I have an idea in my head of what I'm supposed to look like. And, and I compare myself to that all the time. No one else has that vision in their head. Everybody just meets me and go, oh, that's what she looks like, fine, right? Um, so where are you holding yourself back? Because you're waiting to lose weight, you're waiting to have a better outfit, you're waiting to feel better about yourself, you're waiting, believe me, the day's not coming. If the last couple of years have taught us nothing, do not postpone joy. Do not postpone joy. Do not postpone opportunity. If the opportunity is in front of you, you're ready for it. How do I know you're ready? Because the opportunity is in front of you. You don't see opportunities you're not ready for. It's part of how the brain develops, right? This is how, um, like you notice how teenagers will automatically find the other teenagers in the room. If you take them somewhere, take them to a party or something, and they'll be like, there's no one here my age. <laughs> or, okay, there's one kid over there who's my age, okay. Um, because that's how they, right? Because that, that's the opportunities they're looking for. Right. So yeah. So what uh, do not postpone joy is a mug. Yes, totally. Um, Elizabeth says I'd love to declutter clothes in my closet, saying I do feel special in that, or I don't. Yeah, it's a great way to declutter, right? Um, and it'll keep you from, you know, we all have our old standbys, right? They're like, well, I'll just wear this. Like, I'll fall back on this. Like, don't fall back, fall forward. <laughs> like, stretch yourself a little bit. Um, what's the Oscar Wilde quote? Living up to my blue china, right? You know, push yourself a little. Uh, don't wear the I give up clothes. Don't wear the I give up clothes. Uh, Julie says, I pretend I'm on the phone where I wouldn't have seen people anyway when I remember. Yeah, exactly. Mia says, guilty there, doing what I can as I can. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, Heather says, hi everyone. I recently, during the pandemic, decided uh, something non-negotiable around my career, no work projects with people I am or am actively socializing with. I'm a freelance writer and have been fortunate to get regular clients outside of my personal network, social circle community. I'm good, yeah, good. But this can be very hard for people in my small town who wanna to team up on something to understand. After years of experimentation with ways to make this kind of multiplicity in my relationships be a positive experience for me, clients and friends absolutely must not be enmeshed. It's such a relief to have this pre-decided. Absolutely. And, and it just gives, you know, and as long as you, you know, when you're clear, everybody else is clear too. To say, oh, I would love to work with you, but I, but I love you as a person and a friend and I make it a policy to not do business with friends. Let me refer you to so-and-so, you know. Um, when you, you know, sort of weasel and negotiate, they'll weasel and negotiate. Um, you know, you may want to create like a little starter kit or a little checklist or a little something to say like, here, here's a free resource for you to get you started. Um, you know, I'd love to keep you on my mailing list. 
Um, so, you know, you can tell other people about me, but yeah, I don't work with, I don't work with friends. I think that's totally fine. Uh, Leah says, to be honest, I hate that people think this is what I look like. It would also suck for them to think, oh my God, what happened to her? Well, honey, this is what you look like. This is what you look like. For better or for worse, this is what you look like. And, and again, if I took a picture of you today and I showed it to you 20 years from now, you're going to go, oh my God, it looks amazing. <laughs> it looks fabulous. Uh, so yeah, I would make this, this, what you, what, how you appear, uh, I would, I would remove that from the decision-making process. Um, but I'm telling you, you know, I mean, Veronica and I ran a group a couple of years ago to help people get a 20 minute video up. Um, and we had a, this whole six month process and it involved, you know, this image design stuff and all, all this work. And when it came time for them to actually shoot the video, you would have thought we were asking them to drown kittens. I mean, they would have done anything rather than make this video. They drug their feet, they made problems for themselves, they delayed, they deferred, they cried, they were terrified. Um, and I get it, it's hard. There's a reason most people don't do this, but if you have a message that you need to share with the world, then get it out there today. Nobody cares what you look like. I promise you, no one cares. And if you want to do something to make yourself feel better, you want to go get your hair done or, you know, buy a new outfit or whatever, totally do that, you know, but, um, you know, vanity can be a great motivator. Um, but it can also be a, a prison, right? Don't let vanity be your prison. I mean, what do you want your great-grandchildren to say. My great-grandmother was a kick-ass bitch who got on camera and told people what was true no matter what. Or my great-grandmother was a little shy and didn't feel good about how she looked, so she didn't ever put anything on camera. Right? Yeah. Um, you can also do, you know, take the Beyonce route, have Sasha Fierce, like just develop another persona for being on camera. Doesn't have to be your, you know, quite exactly you. You can be a persona you adopt. Uh, this is good to lovingly get over myself and get on with life. Exactly, exactly. You guys are beautiful. You're beautiful people. I've seen your pictures. You're gorgeous. You look great. You smell good. You're fun. You're interesting. You have great things to share with the world. Please do not keep it locked away in a drawer just because you feel shy. I'm shy too, right? Um, Judy was in that group, right? And she actually, we did not have to kick and Judy did not kick and scream. Judy was an example to everyone. Um, she said, yeah, and now it's my signature talk and the basis for my book. So there you go. That's what happens when you're willing to get on camera. Um, and Judy looks amazing, by the way. Uh, and this says, yes, thanks. I need to have a very honest conversation with my minister soon. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and of anybody who should get it, your minister should get it because they, they really know that you can't, um, you know, you have to really separate out your intimate friendships with your sort of professional relationships. Um, so Leah says, oh, good. So good to hear other people's voices today, not just my own. Yeah. Um, Julie says, oh, Heather, I like that. Another way of saying non-negotiables pre-decided. Thanks for that. Yeah, or just say it's my policy. Oh, this is my policy. My policy is I don't eat before noon. My policy is, um, you know, no assholes. My policy is whatever. Great. All right. Well, I've gone a little over because we started a little late because of all the tech difficulties. So thank you for hanging out with us um, through that. Well, I hope that we'll have everything straightened up for next week. Um, if you're interested in Belize, please head over to barefootperfect.com and fill out the application. And then we can have a little conversation, see if it's a good fit. We're going in May. So we'd love to have you with us. Um, and let's... Uh, Let's do one more breath to close out this circle. Veronica, thank you again for have, always having my back. Um, you're the best. Okay, you ready? Let's inhale, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Exhale, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Thank you. Thank you for doing this with me. Hey, I just thought of this. Allison Lane, Judy Gittenstein, if you guys don't know each other, you should connect and talk and have a conversation. Um, Judy is a book editor um, in, in New York and Allison also works with writers. So um, you guys should absolutely know each other. You'd love each other. Okay, love you guys. Thanks so much. See you soon. Special kiss to the Get It Done Labbers. Mwah. Go get them Labbers. Ha, <laughs> ha,